The fourth Sunday in Lent is Mothering Sunday. We place a Methodist orb on the cross, a symbol that declares that the love of Christ reaches round the globe. It is for all. And from John 3 verses 16 and 17, we read, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. And we join together in prayer as we say, Help us to live God as people who know that we are loved, not condemned. Amen. Thank you for joining our Mothering Sunday service. Members of Eccleshaw Methodist Church have contributed today's service and our message is brought to us by Jean Harrison. Let's begin our service with a short reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is the Father who is full of mercy and he is the God of all comfort. He comforts us every time we have trouble so that we can comfort others when they have trouble. We can comfort them with the same comfort that God gives us. Welcome to worship. Julie Yates is going to read her first prayer for us. Julie is the mother of Christopher and Catherine. God, with a mother's heart, you gather us as your children. You comfort and hold us in your warm embrace. When we hurt, your arms enfold us. When we are afraid, 
your wings protect us. When we are hungry, you feed us with the bread of life. God, with a mother's heart, your love surrounds and supports us in good times and tough, in the midst of joy and pain, always and everywhere. You will never leave nor abandon us. God eternal and loving one, God with a mother's heart, we thank you this day for being part of your family. Maureen Embry is going to read from the book of Exodus. Maureen is the mother of Rachel and Matthew and the grandmother of Jet and Isla. Exodus chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 The birth and youth of Moses Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Our next hymn is slightly different. It is part of a well-loved hymn, Think of a World Without Any Flowers. At a Mothering Sunday service at Barkswich in 2018, Ecclesall member and local preacher Jenny Timmis introduced us to a new verse to this hymn, followed by the last two verses, and we are really pleased to be able to sing this today.
today we celebrate Mother's Day. Well, that's what the shops and the TV adverts have us believe. It's um, all cards and chocolates and flowers, which is really nice, don't get me wrong. It's just that in the church we think of Mothering Sunday rather than Mother's Day. Mothering Sunday. If you've ever thought about it and you look on the calendar, you'll find that Mothering Sunday sits just about halfway through the period of Lent. In fact, way back in sort of medieval times, it was known as Mid-Lenting Sunday. It was a Sunday when people were permitted by the church to um, step down from their fasting that we're doing for Lent and go and visit their mother church and take uh, a gift to be given to the church. And they could also eat some of the things that they were um, resisting through Lent, some of the sweet meats or whatever it was that they weren't eating through Lent in their fast. And so it also got another name of Refreshment Sunday. It wasn't until Victorian times that the, um, the understanding of, of Mothering Sunday became um, more of what we know today when usually the young people who'd gone off, left home and gone perhaps gone into service and hadn't been home for months on end were allowed on that mid-lenting Sunday, Mothering Sunday, not only go to the church but to also visit their home and family and they would often take a gift for their mother. Of course nowadays it's become much more of a commercial event um, worldwide really. But for the church we think of Mothering Sunday. In our reading today in Exodus that Julie read, we read about Moses and how his mother sought to keep him safe by hiding him from Pharaoh's soldiers who were out to kill all the Israelite baby boys, by hiding him in a pitch basket in the rushes in the river. And Pharaoh's daughter found him and almost certainly knew that it was an Israelite baby, but chose to save him anyway. So she took the baby, took Moses, and she needed someone who had recently given birth, who could nurse the baby. And so it was that Moses' actually biological mother actually came to take Moses back and bring him up and nurse him until he was at an age when he didn't need that nursing anymore, when she then had to take him back and give him back to Pharaoh's daughter. That mum, Moses' mum, lost her son twice. But Moses grew up with sort of two mothers, um, which is an interesting thought, isn't it? About what he would grow up believing and seeing and how he would be taught. There are many mothers in the Bible. I bet if you thought about it, you could list quite a number. There's um, Hannah, who was uh, Samuel's mother who desperately wanted a child and promised God that she would give that child to the church in service if she was blessed with the child. And so it was that Samuel, at a very young age, was given to the church and went to live with the priest Eli. Hannah was a mother who kept her promise to God. It was Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, again, who couldn't have children, had got to an age well past when she could physically bear children and yet through God's miraculous working and promise she became pregnant with a child and gave birth to John, John the Baptist. There was Naomi, now Naomi will not think as a mother but actually um, her daughter-in-law Ruth became to her like a daughter when Naomi lost her own two sons but took and cared and lived alongside Ruth as a mother and daughter. Ruth and Naomi. There's many other mothers you can think of in the Bible. Of course, I think the one that you would mostly come to say and think about first is Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, the young girl. The young girl who was visited by um, well, a visitation, an angel some might say, and who was spoken to and given the promise that she was going to have a baby even though she was a young girl 
only engaged or promised in marriage to Joseph, not yet married, not being a wife to him, and yet would have a baby. And this was a special baby. It was God's own son. Can you imagine what she must have felt like? Such a young girl anyway, worried and concerned about what would be said. What would the village say when they found out? What would Joseph say when she had to tell him? As it happened, Joseph was told anyway. The worry and the concern about what it was that she was being asked to do. But she embraced it. She believed and she embraced it. And so when Jesus was born, you think that she brought up Jesus, Joseph and Mary brought him up, their firstborn son. I expect she tried to give him as normal a childhood as she could. But all the time in the back of her mind was the words that she had been told. That this child would grow to be special. Special to the people of Israel and to the world. And eventually as he grew and came into adulthood and beyond. He took the step that most sons and daughters make and he left the home, the family home, and entered into his ministry. It's difficult to let go, isn't it, as a parent? And I'm sure Mary would have wondered about Jesus and what he was going to be doing, the ministry that he felt called to, that he knew he had to do. I wonder when she, she watched as his popularity grew and crowds would flock to him for his healing ministry and his preaching. I wonder what she thought. I think she probably stood back a little bit and watched and waited and wondered. I expect she might have felt a little bit envious when he had his close-knit circle of friends, the disciples and other followers, that she couldn't be part of. But it never came between them, mother and son. Fast track to three years after he left home and entered his ministry, and where do we find Mary? She's here at the foot of his cross. With the other women. Some of his closest circle of friends now having deserted him. But not Mary. Not his mother with his mother's love. And what agony she must have felt as she looked up at the cross and watched him being crucified. I want to just um, share with you a few words here by the Reverend Neil Summers. Hope he doesn't mind me quoting this. He says that at that point, as we see and visualise that image of Mary at the foot of the cross, watching her son die. Surely this is where the iconic nature of Mary finds its truest expression. And her mother's love becomes an icon for all loving. She teaches us that love is vulnerable that it suffers, that it takes risks, just as her son did. And as for Jesus, we see him there look down from the cross and see his mother, who has been there all his life, at his birth and here at his, at his end. And his heart fills with love overflowing for her. And he speaks down from the cross to the one disciple standing there. The disciple whom he loved, we believe, was John. And he said to John, Look after my mother. Take her as your own. To your own home. Be to her as a son. And to Mary, be as a mother to John. But you know, in the agony of that moment, I think Mary, suddenly to her, 
everything became clear. And at last, she understood what the angel had spoken to her all those years ago. Mary accepted God's path for her life. She trusted God with her life and with the life of her son. Perhaps she couldn't always see that path ahead. Well, she probably couldn't, like many of us can't. But nevertheless, she persevered and continued to walk that path that God had planned for her. She stayed through love for him right through to the end. Or at least she thought it was the end. Of course, we know that it was only the beginning. And three days later, Mary herself saw that it was the beginning and knew that. That morning, when she lost her son on the cross, she gained a saviour, as the world did. On this Smothering Sunday, when we are thankful for those who have loved us deeply and steadfastly from the moment they met us, let us also be thankful that God himself loves us as a mother unconditionally, deeply, steadfastly. No matter how much we mess up, he is always there waiting for us, welcoming us at the foot of his cross. Mary loved Jesus from the moment he entered her life. She loved him deeply, unconditionally, with a mother's love and steadfastly. In Revelation, the book of Revelation and the message to the church in Ephesus, John writes these words in, in verse 2. This is what troubles me. He says to the church, you have lost the love that you first had. You have lost that love for God that you first had. Perhaps it was once unconditional, deep, deeply held, but it had proved not to be steadfast. I wonder how our love measures up this Mothering Sunday. Amen. Anne is the mother of Daniel and Emily, and the grandmother of William and Zachary and Eleanor. Anne is going to read for us a prayer from the Mother's Union. At the end of each section, please join in in saying, Gentle, patient God, thank you for your tender care. Today we thank God for the gift of mothers and mothering across the world. Isaiah wrote that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in her arms. As one whom a mother comforts, so I will comfort you. Isaiah 66 verse 13. Gentle, patient God, thank you for your tender care. Isaiah also wrote that God will never forget us and that he knows each one of us just as a mother knows her own children. Can a woman forget a baby at a breast, feel no pity for the child she has borne? Even if these were to forget, I shall not forget you. Isaiah 49 verse 15 Gentle, patient God, thank you for your tender care. David wrote that in God's presence, he was quiet and at peace, trusting his God like a child safe in its mother's arms. 
No, I hold myself in quiet and silence, like a child in its mother's arms. Psalm 131, verse 2. Gentle, patient God, thank you for your tender care. Jesus spoke of himself as a mother, longing to wrap his arms around us like a mother hen gathering her chick under her wings. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings? Matthew 23 verse 37 Gentle, patient God, thank you for your tender care. Claire Harper is going to read the next prayer for us. Claire is the mother of Alice and Grace and the grandmother of Orla. Dear Father, we thank you on this Mothering Sunday for our families and all they mean to us. We pray especially for all those mothers who are not, not able to see their children and grandchildren at the moment. Give us strength and fortitude during this time when our contact with family remains restricted. This period of separation has made us realise how precious family contact is and perhaps we have taken this for granted and not really appreciated the joy of the company of those we love in the past. We are sorry if we have taken your love for granted and that much as we appreciate joyful reunions with our families, we may remember to appreciate and be thankful to you for your love for us. We think not just of mothers, but of all those who are having parental roles, for fathers, foster carers and for grandparents. For some, this has been such a stressful period trying to balance all the competing demands of home, work and family. Strengthen them and be with them all and enable them to anticipate the joy of reunion and the support of family and friends. We also think and pray for those who would dearly love to be mothers but due to circumstances or situation cannot have children. Bless them and let them know that they are loved by you. To you, loving Father, and to your Son, who you gave to us to die on a cross for us, may we never forget your sacrifice and be thankful to you for your enduring love. Amen. Dorothy Kirkham is going to read the Lord's Prayer for us. Dorothy is the mother of Paul and Emily and grandmother of Theo, Holly, Jennifer and Ruby and Billy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
And now we come to our blessing. God of mothers, who created mothers, who came as a child and had a mother. God, our mother, loving us with a sweeter and deeper love than we have ever known. Help us to show motherly love one to another, loving fairly, wisely, and with great joy. And may you know the motherly touch of God this day and forevermore. Amen. And now let us say the grace between us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless and happy Mothering Sunday.